cover the Series 35 update for Forza Horizon 4. Uh, what's on the festival playlist this series? What have we got? Let's take a look. All right, so for 50% overall, you get a Horizon backstage pass, and 80% in the festival playlist gets you the Fiat X19. Uh, moving into summer, 50% gets you another shot at the GMC Typhoon, and the big one, 80% gets you a Bugatti Devo. Uh, the photo challenge for summer is hashtag House of Rod. Take a picture of your hot rod in front of the Broadway church. Um, moving on then, in the seasonal playground games, you can get your ch another chance at the 2016 Renault Clio, which is one of our hard to find cars. And then you have got a shot on the Are You Not Entertained season events of getting your hands on the brand new 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Tom, do you want to uh, run us through Autumn? Cool, yeah. So from Autumn, at 50%, you can get yourself a Horizon Backstage Pass. And at 80%, you can get yourself a Lexus ISF. Uh, photo challenge for Autumn, hashtag buddy up. Take a photo of your car with another player or driver tar. It doesn't have to be a buddy. just can be uh, uh, anyone you can find. Then the Autumn Trial, what's that coming over the hill? It's not a monster. You can get yourself the Lancia Delta. We've also got a returning showcase remix, the Pillar of Autumn. And then for the seasonal playground games for Autumn, you can get yourself a Bagani Zonda R. Then the seasonal event, Too Hot Hatch to Handle, you can get yourself a uh, 84 Honda Civic. And then the seasonal event, Cool Cats, you can get yourself the coolest cat, Ford Racing Puma. Mike. Uh, so yeah, moving on into winter. 50% uh, gets you the brand new car, Citroen DS23, which I am super excited about. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. 80% gets you the Lexus RCF. The photo challenge is hashtag Ford Crossing. Take a photo of any Ford at Derwent Water. Seasonal Playground Games has got the Quartz Regalia D. That's the great big one. And moving on, yeah, you've got a chance of not one, but two Forza Edition cars. So the Off-Road Rampage gets you the Land Rover Series 3, and the Cold Commute gets you the BMW M6. Uh, and Tom, do you want to close it out with Spring? Cool. So at 50%, we've got the Porsche 928 GTS. That's new to Series 35. 80%, we've got the Toyota GT86. Photo challenge for spring, uh, hashtag headline trio. Take a photo of your car with two other players or driver tires in front of the festival main stage. Spring trial, drive on the wild side. You can get you the Ferrari 512S. And we've got another showcase remix returning. Take Aisha's taxi for a spin in Taxi for Takeoff. Then the seasonal uh, event, Start Due Rally. Uh, Peugeot 205 will be a reward for that. And we've also got the seasonal event, Sugar O oh, Buggy Buggy. Uh, you can get yourself a Lumicraft Forza Edition. Right, I uh, saw a few <laughs> new reward cars in there. So uh, why don't you take us for a spin? Uh, the Jeep looks like a perfect new addition for those of you who love off-roading, because who doesn't? Uh, so let's start with that one, shall we? Nice. Yes, yeah. here we go. Cool. So yeah, this is the uh, the Jeep Gladiator. Uh, it's based on the Wrangler platform. Uh, in this one we have in game is the Rubicon variant, which was only available at launch. Um, now, if you're a British uh, player, you might think of Rubicon as the delicious, um, <laughs> quite varied flavored soft drinks that you could find in uh, supermarkets. Uh, but Rubicon's also a, a famous trail in America and the trim is named after that as a homage to that. So crossing the Rubicon, but not drinking the mango drink. It, correct, yeah, all <laughs> the strawberry kiwi, uh, both excellent flavors. Well, not deep though. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got uh, front and rear locking diffs and off-road uh, orientated suspension. Also makes a great be basis for um, a outlanding vehicle, um, thanks to the excellent, generous bed space. Great. So well, it's got one of these. Oh. There you go. If you want to make it heavier, but also look cool from the rear. And you can uh, also roll the roof back if you are if you like, which apparently knocks off five kilos somehow. <laughs> yeah, just in case you're out in the summer and want to drive with your top down in the Jeep. Yeah, <laughs> that's that is essential for good weather, choice. let me tell yeah, you. That's... Oh, yeah. 
Let's exit, exit the house and see what the weather's like, shall we? And take your um, wheel for a drive. <laughs> Where's he taking it? Who knows? So, oh, you, perfect. You know, I'm I'm very keen on uh, celebrity owners for for our cars, and couldn't find a, a, an owner per se. But um, in last year's Super Bowl, uh, if you remember the the Groundhog Day commercial that aired during that, uh, which had Bill Murray and the Groundhog. Um, I can't even remember his name now. Hunter, 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 Phil. Phil. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the Groundhog thing is important to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it had a, a, an, an orange um, Jeep Gladiator, and yeah, they ended up going up, up for sale in a. Um, they sold the they sold the Groundhog. They didn't sell the Groundhog. They sold the car that the Groundhog uh, drove in. Oh, the, uh, oh, the Groundhog drove the car. Uh, you've seen you've seen the commercial. I can't say that. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, that that was that was the extent of celebrity owners I could find for this. Well, it's, 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 a, it's a great factoid, anyway. So thank you. So no no <laughs> celebrity owners, but Bill Murray was once in one. He yes, that, yes. <laughs> that's a selling one. point right uh, there. <laughs> it was it was orange. <laughs> that's, that's all I've got. Um, yeah, in, interior in jeeps is always uh, is always super cool. Um, this one's no different. Um, it's got yeah, it's a very generous cup holder. Storage. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I can see that's that. That's for your Rubicon, there. right? That's, your kind uh, of that's for your, your Rubicon. Although, yeah. I, we were just saying before the show, I think if you put a standard size uh, can in there, that's going to be sliding all over the place. Um, I'm afraid I can't even look at the cup holder for, without being in Forza Vista, so <laughs> people are just going to have to imagine what that looks like <laughs> as we drive around. It's um, big. <laughs> once, you, once you unlock it, though, for completing the Are You Not Entertained season event in summer, which is next week, uh, you, can, you can check it out for yourselves. Leah, if you if you just rolled out of the dealership in your brand new Jeep Gladiator, oh, yeah. what what drink are you putting in that uh, cup holder? This is my first choice of car, so uh, yeah, uh, likely. Um, <laughs> I feel like it needs one of those really big. You know that like you go to an American drive-through and you order a regular sized drink and it's like this big and it's in a polystyrene cup. That's <laughs> yes. what that's made for. So. I'd have to I, be in I, America. <laughs> I feel like the yeah. I feel like the manufacturers were thinking of that. That yeah, drink, um, when it's not. You're on a long journey. You need a big drink. Um, great. Uh, have we got anything else uh, with the Jeep, or shall we move on to the next one? Let's move on. Should we move on? What's next? Yeah, Leo? right. Great. Well, we've got next up another great Porsche, um, which I'll let you guys introduce. So let's take a look at that one. All right. I'll grab it. Okay. There it is. There it is. Deliver us. Oh, the Porsche the headlights are up already. Ooh. The headlights are like popped up for us. So Ooh, this is oh, yeah. the <laughs> this is the '93 uh, Porsche 928 uh, GTS. It was originally designed to replace the 911, which obviously, um, uh, I guess, I guess they didn't need to in the end. Um, 911 <laughs> proved so popular. <laughs> um, this was built more as a luxury uh, GT than sports car, and it's got a. a a front V8 5.4 litre instead of the traditional rear engine flat six. Uh, it's got 345 brake horsepower uh, and the GTS is, is the top of the line spec. So you, you've got all your mod cons in there. And as we just mentioned at the start there, you've got the uh, the super cool uh, pop-up lights, which we were... They are very cute in this one, aren't they? Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not I sure like why they popped car. up in the middle of the day, but... Uh, <laughs> but we're thankful sure. for it. We're very <laughs> yeah. thankful for it. Um, because it was a bit awkward to get them to pop up, pop up pre-show. <laughs> um, but now they just won't go away. Um, yeah, Mike knew the tricks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the um, yeah, that, that the front engine is like this gives it a slightly unusual feel for a Porsche because, like I say, it's they were going after that like executive saloon market with it, which I think they felt was a a bigger market for them than the sports car. Um, so it really does have a feel of that kind of German super saloon, like a like an M3 or a. C-Class and S-Class. Um, yeah, it's really got the, that weight distribution with the engine at the front. It's, um, it's a really interesting feel, yeah, for a Porsche. Yeah. What would you call the colour that, that's in? Because that, to me, is like that grey, green... Like, I don't know what it is, but that is the 90s to me, like modern 90s. What? I don't know what to call it, though. Like a... Battleship like a grey. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Battleship <laughs> grey. Oh, I don't. Should have checked Porsche. <laughs> it's not quite gunmetal, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it's kind of interesting. There's a bit of a bit of brown in there, isn't there? Mm. Nice though. 
Um, yeah, I think yeah great. Anything saying, else with the Porsche? Then? I, I think I'm right in saying this was the first uh, like mass production ma ma production car to be um, aluminum. That's a bodywork. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's right. So I'm, I'm sure I've already been corrected in chat if it's not the case. Um, Let's hope so. Oh, awful angle for that. If they're not correcting. Um, the facts, they'll be saying what an awful driver you Well, are. I mean, I would, I would agree with them there. That's that awful. Um, One or the other. <laughs> or they're going to thread the needle, but the angle of the approach is awful. Um, cool. How'd you get this one, Tom? Uh, so you get this one from... Um, I just had that to hand, didn't I? Um, it is 50% in spring. Ooh, so you have to wait to the end of the series for this one. But, uh, there we go. Jeez, What's next, Leo? What are we looking at next? Right, well, the next one is going to be a favourite of the vintage photographers out there, hopefully. Um, it is the 1975 Citroen DS23, which I believe we have there. And it's, I, I love this colour. I, and, and this is, you show me a card, I'm like, wow, the colour is so nice. <laughs> but look at that, that's sat on trend. That's like a sage green. Love that. Anyway, uh, you tell us about the car and I'll stop talking about the colour. Sure. Needs to hear about um, so I... I adore this car. Um, I think it is a, a really, really cool car. It's absolutely stunning to look at. And it's a, just a real icon of, of design. There's just so many cool stories about it. Um, so Tom's taking it in here, so we can't really examine it. But we'll take a look in just a sec. Oh, so first production car to have disc brakes, which is insane when you consider just how uh, unresponsive and dangerous drum brakes were. That they, were <laughs> they were the standard uh, all the way up until the launch of this. Uh, it also has a hydro pneumatic suspension. Um, which you probably can't see it on this road because it's quite flat and smooth, but if you take it off-road, which we'll do in just a moment, um, the, wheel, the wheels move around, the body stays completely still, absorbs all of the movement in the surface. You can, you can actually go off-road with it. And although you can't do it in-game, in, in the actual real car, you can adjust that at the height of the suspension to raise and lower the body. So if you are going off-road, you can raise up the bodywork so you don't accidentally any, ding any of your bodywork. Um, and is that a feature that you see in cars a lot these days? Um, pneumatic suspension? Yeah, it, it, do, it does still exist. It's quite common in, in like Rolls Royce cars. Uh, a lot of modern McLarens have it. Um, oh, right. So it's 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 done in cars that expect to be like really executive car stuff, a really premium comfort. Um, and like cars. as right, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't know how many people get chauffeured in a McLaren, but um, <laughs> we're still <laughs> they're out we're there. Still a car that, um, that wants their driver to feel especially comfortable. And if car, if, uh, <laughs> if Tam, Tom, Tam, if Tom takes a look at the side, you can just see how much the how much the wheels are moving there, how much the suspension is just getting through all that mm -hmm. terrain. But the bodywork is staying absolutely still. It's just a really interesting design. Um, obviously beautiful as well. Got that really kind of futuristic look. Um, interesting fact about this car is when it was revealed at the uh, Paris Motor Show. Uh, it broke a record for the most pre-orders of a car. It got um, 80,000 wow. pre-orders within the first 10 days. That record stood uh, all the way up until uh, 2016 uh, when it was broken wow. by the Tesla Model 3. Jeez. So this was, of its time, an absolute like barnstormer of a car. Um, would have cost you about $4,000, uh, which in today's money is 27K, which... It's not bad. All right, it's all right, isn't it? Yeah. It's all right for, for a car that it was absolutely jam-packed with um, like really futuristic design and really, for its time, really forward-looking technologies. Um, and if you go into the side of the dashboard as well, that clock is just amazing in the middle, in the center of the oh, dash there. Oh, look at that. So nice, so what? 70s, that clock. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't advise driving the real version of this car through water. Um, <laughs> That's how you recharge the uh, hydro pneumatic suspension. You have to <laughs> every now and then go through a, a, a foot deep puddle. <laughs> should we take it to? Give it a um, drink. Should we take it to a house? Can do, can do. Then... I know Tom loves a celebrity owner. Um, there will be loads of celebrity owners for this because it's a very, very popular car. Um, but Jay Leno has one. Um, I don't know if that's cheating because he has most cars. He has a load of he cars. He has a lot of cars. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this came, this placed third in uh, the Car of the Century Awards as well, behind the Ford Model T and the Mini. So it actually was ahead of the, the VW Beetle in terms of uh, Car of the Century. So it really is a proper icon of, mm -hmm. of French motoring, and the, the equivalent really of, uh, like the Mini was in Britain and the Beetle was in Germany, this was the, the French equivalent. And I think it's high time that we added it to the game. So I'm really, really excited for this one. Are those Got that detailing. I think they might be ashtrays, yes. Um, as as was the style in France at the time, and frankly, I, I can still imagine. to this day. Yeah, I can almost smell being in this car. <laughs> <laughs> Very French. Yeah. Even the kids are smoking in the back. A good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> um, what, what are those? Are those vents on the back of the front seats? What are those? 
Oh, what, they, oh, they trade? Days? No. Yeah, oh, I, 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 we, I think we think about the ashtrays. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, right, I see. Okay. <laughs> Right, I missed that. Um, all right, well, uh, yeah, iconic and uh, just stunning detail as well on that card. Ooh. That straight back seat as well. I don't know. I can feel that, like, but not in yeah. a good way. <laughs> one more, one more cool quirk about this car before we move on. Oh, gorgeous yep. engine. Cool place to keep the steering wheel. Probably acts as a crumple zone. Sorry, the spare wheel rather than steering wheel. Mm -hmm. If you go into the back, uh, right at the top of the um, the window, they're, they're, they're the uh, indicators at the top there. Just in a really like oh, bonkers cool. place at either side cool. of the uh, rear window. Oh, it's kind of got that Jetsons look to it. It does, doesn't that's it? That's what yeah, I was it's... gonna say. It looks like what the Jetsons cars are based on. I was like, no, no, shut up, Leah. No, it doesn't. No, it does. <laughs> There's a great right, photo well. from the Paris Motor Show where it was revealed, where they unveiled it in a vertical position, kind of hanging on its like balanced on its rear. It's because it looks kind of like a rocket ship when when placed in that position. So, um, yeah, it's uh, that's so cool. Excellent car. Yeah. A lot going on with this car. I love it. Um, 